Hey and welcome back to Cortex Futura Tools. In this video I'm going to give you an in-depth look at my complete second brain system inside of Tana. This is the system that I've dreamed of for more than 15 years. A single place for all of my notes, my goals, and the projects and tasks to accomplish those goals. Basically a system to organize my entire life. I've used dozens of other note-taking apps before and back in the day I even used to hack my own markdown-based system where I would manually place all the backlinks between the notes that I took. And then when Tana came along, it was like a revelation. Finally, I have a complete system where I can capture all of my notes, my ideas, my research, my tasks. I can track all of my projects with all my tasks and thoughts inside of that project. I wish I had had this system during my PhD. But now I can organize my entire life using Tiago Forte's Para system. I have a powerful Zettelkasten and I even have a complete GTD system baked into one. So in this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth look at every single part of this system from an action-oriented point of view. That means we're going to look at the actions we would take inside this system from quickly capturing items to doing synthesis and managing our projects. The PhD in me also wants to acknowledge all his sources like I would do in academia. So I quickly want to give a shout out to all the people who influenced this system and that you should definitely check out. It starts with Nicholas Luhmann and his Zettelkasten system and Zynka Ahrens, Andy Matuszak and Maggie Appleton for their modern takes on that system. Tiago Forte with his immensely popular books Building a Second Brain and Para Method. Joel Chan with his QCE process for knowledge synthesis. And of course last but very much not least Thomas Frank who with his template Ultimate Brain for Notion gave me sort of a blueprint for how to package all the systems that I had built for myself based on the insights of the people that I just mentioned and how to package it into a single system that I could also share with others. Check out Ultimate Brain at the link down below this video. For most of my life I had to juggle multiple apps to implement all the ideas from these people but now I can do all of that inside of Tana. Now this will be a little bit of a longer video so check out the timestamps over here and below this video so that you can jump around and look at the things that interest you most and that you also can go back and re-watch parts that interest you and that you want to reference. And before we dive in, I'll also mention that I've turned the full system that you're going to see into a template. So if you want a complete done-for-you second brain system inside Tana that you can just add to your workspace and use right away, you can actually get it over at cortexfutura.com slash brain. As you might have guessed from the URL, the template is called Tenarian Brain. And I'll note right now that you can use the code YouTube, which I'm going to put here on the screen, for $50 off the list price. I'll have more information about that at the end of the video. But for now, let's actually dive in because I'm going to give you an in-depth look at every single part of the system so that in case you want to build it yourself, you can use my system for inspiration. So let's get this show on the road and dive into the template. Once again, the template is called Tenarium Brain and it comes with a bunch of live searches that you can put into your day super tag and that will give you a daily dashboard of everything important going on in your life right on the day node in Tana every day. So the first thing that I usually do is I open the today's agenda node in the sidebar, right? And that will allow me to plan my day. So let me zoom out here for a second so you can see better how this looks like. I open up today's agenda and I see I have one event here that is an all day event, right? A task that has a due date set for today. And what I can now do is I can just drag it down and say, okay, I'm going to work on this from three until five, for example. And with that, I already have a chunk of my day blocked off. And now I can go to the next step, which is to open up the GTD dashboard view. So let me zoom in again so you can see that better. We now have here a view of everything that is marked as 
do next, right? It's something that is right now in progress, something that I want to focus on. The due today shows me the task that I just scheduled here on the day node, right? The record to narrow and brain build guide, which I'm doing right now. And then we have a live search that lists all overdue tasks. So task where the due date is in the past. And now I can also go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to drag and drop this onto the day node here and I'm going to schedule this and that moves it out of overdue, right? Back into due um, and it sets that field so that it shows up here on today's agenda, right? And that again is a really easy way to figure out, okay, how can I um, use the time that I have today to go through all of these tasks. And if I want a view of what's upcoming, I have an upcoming tasks view that lists all the tasks where the due date is in the future, right? And right now there's only one thing in here, but you can imagine with all the tasks you might have across your projects, that list could be very long. So what you can actually do is you can filter this and then look for due date today, last week, this week, next week, this month, next month, right? And so you can really filter down to see only the next upcoming tasks if you choose to. So that's a very easy way to keep on top of your tasks, obviously. The other thing that is in the template is a live search for a global task inbox. And this lists all the tasks that don't have a project set yet, or projects and that mean aren't connected to I might add a task and that means project, wherever it's I automatically going to show up or here in this global task inbox until I fill it until I fill in all the missing information, then it's going to move away and I'm going to see it in the context that I need to see it again. This is basically no matter where I add things, um, I can always process them and make sure they go where they need to go. So let's actually look at that. In Tana, of course, you can simply add a task by typing Command E or Control E on Windows. And I can now enter um, a task here and it's going to show up on the day node. So this is a task, I tag it with task Tenarian Brain and it shows up on my day node here and it shows up here in the global task inbox because I did not set a project in the project field and now I get to do that here in the global task inbox. So even when I'm moving really fast, adding tasks, I don't have to spend the time to associate it with a project as I'm listing out tasks. I know I can do that later because I will see that task again here in the task inbox. This also will list projects. So if I have here release next free template and I make that a project, that is going to show up here as well until I connect it to a goal which is connected to an area, right? So if we make this a goal, increase newsletter subscribers, it immediately becomes a mismatch and moves out of that global task inbox because it now has all the missing information that I want so that I can see it again in the right context. Now having this uh, global quick capture that Tana has is really nice, right? It allows you to add tasks no matter where you are, what you're doing. And of course you don't have to do that wherever you tag a task, it's going to show up here um, as well. But I want to show you one more magical thing that Tana allows you to do and that's built into Tenarium Brain to have a really smooth workflow. Tana lets me record voice notes directly into Tana on the web app, but of course you can do that uh, through the mobile app as well. So let me quickly record a voice note. Capture voice, right? Command K, capture voice. Pick up some milk and send off the package for Phil's birthday. Stop voice capture, right? And now I'm going to tag this as a voice note that comes with a transcribe button here, right? And if I click that, the voice note is going to get transcribed and the transcript is going to put into a field transcript. Now what I can do is I can click this new button that's built into Tenarium Brain 
if I click that, that is going to use AI to work through the transcript and extract all the tasks in there, right? And auto tag them as new tasks. And as you can see here, they show up in the global task inbox immediately. So you can always capture voice notes um, and turn them into tasks whenever you want, wherever you are in Tana. I think that's a quite magical and, and very useful um, capability. Next, we have priority projects. Priority projects give you a simple dashboard to really have the most important things that you're working on at any given time ready to see and work through on your day node, right? So publishing Tenarium build guide, um, this is this video, that's important, and working on a new course that I'm doing, uh, building uh, Mastering Tana AI. So I have these on the day node every time that I open up the day node and I can see what goal it serves, I can see any tasks um, that I might have, and I can even see previous work if I've done any on this in the form of microcycles. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Next, we have a view for current cycles. Cycles are a way to structure your time in longer increments, right? So we have days, weeks, months, or whatever. I like to use six week periods. The folks at 37 Signals have that um, as their default planning horizon, basically. The way I call these are macro cycles that are connected to half year increments that I call super cycles. And the idea basically is to have a way to really set a mission, right? Okay, that's what I want to do in the next half year and then plan in six week increments. Okay, how do I actually um, and get to that mission, right? You can list goals here, um, experiments. We're going to talk about experiments in just a second as well. And that allows you to have a high level overview of what you're supposed to be working on every day on your day node if you want to check and see that your work today is actually connected to your overall larger goals that you're working towards. Now, I just mentioned experiments. One thing I find extremely useful, and that's why I've built it into the system, is to have a way to track things that I'm changing and experimenting with, right? Too often we start with a plan to do something, take a cold shower, post six times per week on Twitter or whatever, and then we start doing that, we fall out of that, we don't collect lessons, and this is a way to prevent that, right? So you can tag node with experiment, is going to show up here if you set the date range, right? So this is only going to show you all the experiments that are currently ongoing and have the status running. And you can formulate a hypothesis, say what you're actually going to change, and then observe what actually happens. And once the experiment is concluded, you can see, okay, did that work? Did that change? Did uh, waking up at 4.30 or did taking a cold shower um, change anything uh, in my life? So that's also built right into the template. If you read a lot, I suspect that you might be using Readwise as I am to collect all my highlights and notes from the books and tweets and videos that I'm consuming um, every day. And Tana has a tight integration with Readwise and Tenarium Brain comes with a live search that automatically shows you all the sources you've added to Readwise and highlighted in the last three days. I find that extremely useful because it allows me to sort of get a second exposure to the things that I've read, um, allows me to connect things to my Tana graph, and it allows me to think more deeply about the things that interest me and, and that I want to spend time with. So this live query here pulls in the readwise super tag for any node that was created in the last three days. So The World Beyond Your Head is a great book. I highly recommend that. And so that's going to be put in here. And now I can connect it to any topics in my workspace. The author um, I can uh, put in here. And I can look at all the highlights that I've taken in Readwise. And these I can then also connect with topics. I have my fleeting notes here. These are auto tagged from Readwise as well. And if I don't want to uh, write the topics myself and connect these to my graph myself, Tenarium Brain comes with a AI enabled command get topics that's going to fill this out um, by itself. And it puts in three 
useful tags here, uh, cooking, restaurant industry, and the idea of a background jig, right? And that's a really cool concept that I also talk about here in that fleeting note. So I can now go in here and copy that over. And so if I'm looking for the background jig as an idea um, or, or topic, I will find both the highlight and the fleeting note that I wrote about it um, as well, very easily. Tenere Brain comes with even more AI commands. I can ask the AI how I might apply a lesson that is in a highlight, um, who might be interested in talking about something, and I can also create far analogies, which really help in understanding and applying concepts that you're reading about. If you're interested in that, check out the video I'm linking above, uh, where I go in much more detail about far analogies. Speaking of fleeting notes, the final live search that we have in the day super tag, and so always on the day note, is for recent fleeting notes. And this collects all the fleeting notes added in the last three days. And that is another way to prompt myself to think more deeply about the things that I'm interested in, uh, connected to other things, come up with new thoughts, and a really good way to make my graph and my workspace in Tana more connected, which later really helps for synthesis. Of course, that is not all. In the sidebar, we have even more live searches that give us destinations to go to find the things in our workspace, no matter where they are. We talked about horizons already, so this will give you an overview of your half-year plans and of your macro cycles. The macro cycles are shown as a calendar view, which I find quite useful to see as I'm looking at the current date. Okay, where am I right now? Is there a new one coming up very soon? But of course, you can always view these as lists um, as well, or any other view that you might want. As I mentioned before, there's of course also a powerful para implementation in the template. So here in the sidebar, of course, we have a view of all the projects that we have. Active projects are the ones you're working on right now, and you can make any project active by selecting the project status in progress. We have a bunch of these here uh, in the backlog, in progress, done, dropped, someday maybe projects, of course, also exist. Um, and here in the sidebar of the projects view, uh, we have the project backlog and then those that we say we might want to do in the future. And we have here a view of the completed and dropped projects. So basically a project archive. What you also see here is completed work, microcycles and tasks, which you can group by the project that they belong to in that view if you want to look at what you've done so far. That's also what happens if you focus on any project. So you have here a view of all the tasks that belong to any uh, specific project. So you never lose track of what's actually to do. And you can collect here previous work. A previous work means work sessions in the sense of a two hour block where you really focus on that project. We're going to talk about that once I'm through with the para system overall. So those are projects. Projects are connected to goals and goals are connected to areas. So we have an area view following the para project area resource archive methodology from Tiago Forte. And here we have a view of all the areas that I have set up in this workspace, family, Cortex Futura as the business, uh, fitness, health, home, and finances. Every area comes with dedicated live searches that lists all the goals, projects, and resources and assets connected to that area. So the Cortex Futura area, for example, has three live goals right now, launching Tenarian Brain, increasing newsletter subscribers, and launching Mastering Tar AI. It also has a project dashboard, and this shows all the active projects that relate to this area, completed projects, someday maybe projects, and the backlog. Uh, of course as well. And then we have resources and assets that are connected to a specific area. 
Now I've mentioned goals, so let's look at these in more detail. We have a goal view here as well with sub views for current goals, accomplished goals, dropped goals, and goals we failed. Um, and goals, as I mentioned, are the step in between between a project and an area. And I find that really useful, even though it is a slight deviation from Tiago's original methodology, because it really allows me to formulate what am I actually trying to achieve in a larger context. Because you might have a goal that many projects work towards. And so that is what the goal setup does. So we have here, then for every goal, of course, a dashboard with active and completed projects. Um, and here you see published in Aaron Brain Build Guide. Again, that is a currently active project that is um, connected to the goal of launching Tenarium Brain. And here you see then completed projects, right? So um, completing the template, setting up the circle community. And that's where I find it is useful to have sort of a step between projects and areas because it allows me to group projects into larger entities, which are goals. Then we have resources um, following Tiago's methodology. And I split resources in three things, really. The first one is broader topics, right? So video editing, things that experts do, the history of the research university, those are broader topics. Some topics are more specific though, they're actually concepts, right? So psychology is a concept, cognitive flexibility theory is a concept. So that's where I like to have like a subcategory of a topic. What's interesting is, is that um, concepts in Tenarium Brain actually are part of other concepts if you want to, right? So cognitive flexibility theory is part of psychology. If I go to psychology and here to concepts, I see that cognitive flexibility theory and expertise are part of psychology. And that allows me to really build a knowledge tree of related concepts and how they are uh, connected. And I find that extremely useful for writing and making sense of the world. The third category that I have is assets. And assets are things like my domain or my MacBook or uh, OBS, the software with which I'm recording this video. And this view um, and distinguishing that um, allows me to have a quick overview of all the things that are actually using in production and gives me a place to record settings, things um, that I need to know to set things up should something break and those sorts of things. So that's a way that I have like another category that isn't really a resource, it's not a concept, it's an asset, right? That's also built directly into the template in the system. And then we have archives. In Tana, archives aren't really as necessary as in a folder-based structure um, because of the graph nature, things sort of go away anyways through the live searches if you uh, don't want them in view. But for the sake of completeness, we have an archive projects view and that looks for anything that is a project where the project start status is either done or dropped, right? So things that definitely aren't active um, anymore. And the same exists for areas and resources and for goals. So that's the, the mini lesson on Para, right? Para allows you to have an overarching concept of an area, right? Under which you then organize all the projects that you want to drive forward for that area. You have resources and these connect to projects. You can use these in any specific project and you can connect projects to these resources um, as well. Now, how do you actually do the work? That's also something that I've spent quite a while um, experimenting with and working with. And in Tenarium Brain, I give you something that is called a microcycle. And a microcycle has a start time and an end time, and it is connected to a specific project. Let me link this to a project, Launch Mastering Tana AI. 
And it is a way to do interstitial journaling, right? What am I trying to get done? What are the consequences if I don't get this done? How will I know that this is complete and what might distract me, right? The folks at Ultra Working pioneered this uh, approach uh, a number of years ago and having those 10 minutes at the beginning really helps focusing, getting into focus. Then you do nano cycles. Nano cycles are 30 minute blocks of, again, start in the end time, you record your energy, how much you want to do the work and write again down what the goal is and how you will get started. And if you do that, I promise you, you're going to have a fantastic two hour session of three nano cycles that really drive forward your work. You don't have to do this, of course, but you can if you want, and it's baked right into Tenere Brain. And as I alluded to previously, if we go in here now, we see in the previous work tab um, when we did these microcycles, these work sessions on our specific projects. And that's a really nice way to see how you're making progress on something that you're working on. My system also features a Zettelkasten. And a Zettelkasten is an extremely useful way of collecting highlights, quotes, and thoughts, if you will, um, about those highlights and quotes. Um, I follow the methodology of Sinka Ahrens in his book, uh, How to Take Smart Notes, inspired by Nicholas Loom and Zettelkasten. And what I have here are two types of notes, a fleeting note, which is just a small thought that came into your head, and then permanent notes that are actually formulated out more specifically to collect your thoughts, um, if you will. So you write loads of fleeting notes, smaller number of permanent notes, and the permanent notes are more refined and basically something that you could copy paste into an email to show what you're thinking about a specific thing. Permanent notes um, have related questions and we're going to tackle questions in just a second. And then of course they also have topics um, or uh, resources in the para palettes. Highlights we've already seen connected to sources um, and these show up here. So you have a central location where you can look at your highlights and you can uh, filter these and, and sort these to your heart's content. Um, and of course, we also have here a collection of sources. This view actually lists all of the different sources. Tenarium Brain comes with um, I think 20 different types of sources if you want to go that deep. Obviously books and tweets and podcast episodes, but also like patterns and whatever you might want to have. Uh, basically, I went through all of Zotero's source types and I put them into Tenarium Brain for your use. But we also have a bookshelf view um, that gives you a central place where you can look at um, the things you're currently reading, consuming, um, working through and then a view for anything that is marked as to read, to watch, to listen or that is marked as done. Now let's talk a little bit about deeper analysis, right? I really like the QCE framework from uh, Professor Joel Chan who developed this to help with knowledge synthesis. And the way it works in my system is that you mark things as a question and then you go through the things that you're reading and you're looking for claims that are made on a specific um, question. So for example, this is a question that I looked at during my PhD. Does access to the internet cause more government transparency, political rights and democracy, right? The topic it links to is democratization, internet penetration and mass mobilization. And here in this synthesis material, we find related claims. And in the literature, there's two claims that are sort of competing that internet penetration is a negligible effect on mass mobilization and that higher internet penetration means greater ability to politically mobilize, right? If you look at the world today, sort of a relevant question to, uh, to investigate. And so having these two related claims here allows me to collect evidence, right? Evidence that supports any specific claim or that contradicts um, a specific claim, right? And here we have one piece of evidence, right? That contradicts this specific claim, but is in support 
of this specifically. Right. And that is a super convenient way to collect and think through things that you might be researching. Whether you're a researcher or not, I think this is a super helpful framework. One thing that I've built into my system here is an AI command that automatically provides you sort of counter arguments or counter considerations for any claim. So if we click this button here, we get a field counters against claim and then the AI is going to provide us with counters against this specific claim. And that I find is really helpful to have a really quick feedback cycle and never get taken in by any particular claim, right? You always have counter arguments to then uh, feed your thinking, um, if you will. For the questions themselves, of course, um, we also have something that I find quite useful that the AI can suggest a research plan for you, right? So here we have the question and now the AI is going to go out and coming up with a research plan in search terms to figure that out, right? The research plan is uh, defining key terms, which terms should we define, conducting a literature review, it identifying relevant data sources, it even gives us uh, places where we might look. So that's a really powerful, quick way to get started um, with any research question you might have. And again, I think this is useful whether you're a researcher in the academy, a professor or a student, but also if you're an analyst um, in a company or do market research or what have you. And then, of course, with the synthesis material here, um, as we go to the synthesis phase, what we can do is we open this up um, on the side, we look at uh, the related claims and their evidence, the related thoughts, and then we can put our synthesis here and start writing our particular answer to a given question, tag it as a permanent note, if you will, and then you have um, a really nicely formulated process for making sense of the world, all right built in and, and ready to go for you. Now, of course, we aren't alone in the world, in the universe, we don't know, but in the world, we certainly are not. And so Tenarian Brain also comes with a view of looking at uh, the people in your life, right? So friends and family, you can tag uh, someone as a friend, as an acquaintance, as a colleague or an author. Authors show up here, friends and family with um, their birthday, if you want to enter it. and that makes it really easy to figure out, okay, who have I been talking to, collect all the uh, conversations you've had all in a central place, note down gifts, for example, um, really convenient um, as well. Then the experiments view, um, we talked about already what experiments are for, active, planned, completed and dropped experiments, if you want to run these. I really like the journal, so you can um, create journal entries that automatically collect in a central place um, and are quite useful. And you can mark things as wins and that brings us to the year in review. When you collect something on a given day as a win or a miss, you're automatically collecting things um, to come up later towards the end of the year. Uh, you will have a very easy way of collecting all of these and then saying, okay, how did my year actually go? Again, all of that built right into um, the template itself. So that hopefully is a complete overview of my second brain system inside of Tana. This is a complete productivity system. And now I can do pretty much everything related to note-taking, planning and taking action inside one system in Tana. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I've also turned this into a template. So if you want a complete second brain system, totally done for you, that you can just add to your Tana workspace and start using right away, you can get it. It's called Tenarian Brain. You can get it over at cortexfutura.com slash Tenarian brain. And I even have a promo going on right now for this video. Right now, you can use the code YouTube for a full $50 off the list price. So I think it's a pretty fair price. And for that price, you get way more than just the template itself. You also get, in my opinion, world-class beginner guides, onboarding tutorials, and actual support if you get stuck and have questions. And with my beginner tutorials, I've put a ton of effort into making them as comprehensive and easy to understand 
as possible. I have a full tutorial on how to integrate Readwise, on how to set up your own AI commands, and all kinds of other useful stuff. So once again, if you want a complete second brain system done for you and ready to use in Tana right away, go over to cortexfutura.com slash tenarian brain and use YouTube at checkout for a full $50 off the purchase price of the template. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, I'll be in the comment section down below answering and I'll be back very soon with another video. And See you there.